In the previous episode, we made a baseboard, but without track, we have no way to run our trains. Guess we better do something about that then. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to the second episode of Model Railway Basics. Now, track is something that every model railway needs. After all, without it, we'd have no way to run our locos, but it's important to make sure you lay your track properly. That's the subject of today's video, and it can be a bit worrying for newcomers to the hobby. After all, if you don't do a good job of laying your track, then your locos and rolling stock may not run as smoothly as you'd like, which isn't great if you want a working model railway. In reality, though, it isn't that complicated, so today I'll show you the technique that I personally use on a short section of track, and then you can give it a go on your own layout later on if you like. Now, before we get started, it is important to note that there are two main kinds of track for model railways. The first is set track, which is basically just set lengths of track, like straights and points and, of course, curves. I believe Pico have their own range of set track, as do Hornby and Backman as well. And if you're an N-gauge modeler, there's also Kato, who have their own system of clip-together track, which I believe also includes the ballast as well. Set track is far more common if you're building your very first layout, or if you're following something like a Hornby track mat, for example. But in complete contrast, there's also flexible track, or what Pico calls streamline track. Now this is flexible track, and as you may imagine, it is indeed flexible. Uh, and the advantage of this means that you can then form much smoother curves, so you're not restricted to the geometry of the set track. You can form this in whatever way you like. Um, it also comes in these great big long lengths as well, as you can see, which means that you can cut it down to the perfect length, which also means you can be a bit more flexible when it comes to designing your layout too. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing between flexible track or set track. Flexible track is more commonly used by more advanced modelers, but set track is a great way for beginners to get started, or especially for those who just want to get something up and running really quickly. In the end though, it doesn't really matter because the basic technique that we use to lay the track is essentially the same. So, with that said, let's have a look, shall we? So, I have a length of flexible track, and today I'll be attaching it to this small baseboard. If the track needs cutting down, make a mark on each rail to show where you need to cut. Moving the baseboard to one side, let's cut the rails. Now there's a few different ways to do this. Some people like to use a razor saw or special track cutters, but personally I prefer to use a Dremel with a cutting disc. Obviously you can't see that I am wearing eye protection while doing this, which is a good idea because you don't want any tiny shards of metal flying up at your face. Anyway, as you can see, it does make cutting through the rails a very quick job indeed. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but as you get more confident with it, it does get easier. Both rails are now cut, but the track is still joined by the webbing between the sleepers. If you haven't already cut through this with the Dremel or your saw, you can just use a craft knife to cut through the plastic and the two pieces will separate. With the track now cut down to size, we could just lay it directly onto the baseboard, but an additional step that some people like to do is to put down a base layer of cork first. I'm using 3mm cork, which is a fairly common thickness that modelers use for OO gauge, but there's nothing to stop you using other thicknesses, especially if you're working in a different scale. Lay the track on the cork, and then quickly measure how long your piece is, as well as how wide you want the cork strip to be. Personally, I like it to be just a little bit wider than the ends of the sleepers. Now, modelers sometimes get hung up on whether to use cork or not. Some say it deadens the sound of the trains, others say it makes no difference at all, and others just use it to create a shoulder for the ballast, which we'll look at in a later tutorial. Whatever you decide though, it is all down to personal preference on whether you use cork or not. And then just cut a strip of cork. While you could use a knife, I find using scissors much easier and more convenient too. You can also buy cork that is pre-cut to the shape of the track and points, which is also another way of doing this if you don't mind spending the extra money. With the strip cut out, it's time to stick it down using PVA, and we'll simply spread the glue over the area where the track will go. And as you can see, any excess glue can then be added to the bottom of the cork. 
and then when you're ready, simply press the cork down into the glue, making sure that it's lined up in the right position. Now if the cork has come from a roll like mine has, then it'll probably want to spring up, so just simply use some weights to hold it down in position. And then honestly you just need to leave it, preferably overnight until it's dried. If you've got a lot of cork and track to lay, you might want to try using spray glue instead as you can see here. Personally I feel PVA works slightly better, but spray glue is definitely a good option to go with if you're working quickly. So some time has now passed and we'll remove the weight to reveal the cork, which you can see is now stuck fast to the baseboard. And now finally it's time to actually lay the track, and to do this I prefer to use track pins as if you make a mistake it's easy to remove the pin and try again. Using a pin drill make a small pilot hole in the centre of the sleepers, and this will help the pin to stand up when you go to hammer it in, as they are quite small and fall over easily. Push the track pin into the sleeper, and then you can hammer it into place. And then a bit further up the track, simply repeat the process with another pin. Now you don't need to put a pin into every single sleeper, in fact on this short section I'm only using these two pins, which is more than enough to hold it in place. And don't forget when we eventually ballast the track, that will also help hold everything together as well. Now if you prefer, you can also glue track down, as you can see here, just by spreading some glue on the underside of the sleepers and then pressing it down into the base. This works fine for straight sections, but on curves you will need to find a way to hold the track so that the glue sets with the correct curve. Do bear in mind though that this makes it slightly harder to move your track if you make a mistake, or if you ever decide to change your mind. Back to our main board though, and you can see that the track is now fixed down. Obviously this is just a small section, but you just keep repeating the process until you've made your way around the entire layout. So that is the very basics of track laying, and as you can see it's really quite simple. Uh, it is important though to remember not to rush this step as it will affect how well your trains run in the future. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode guys, but if you haven't already please do make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications too. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!